أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي I've been sitting in the back room listening to these speeches. The ayat of Quran Sheikh Isa recited. The thoughts that Sister Aisha shared, Brother Saad shared, and Brother Naveed shared. I want to build on those concepts, brothers and sisters. If we talk about establishing justice, the two ayat of Surah Al-Ma'idah and Surah Al-Nisa are one of the core principal ayat that define justice and the parameters around them. And in the few minutes that I have with you, I want to speak about that. I want to share the wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, Ya ayyuhu al-ladheena amanu, kunu qawwameena bilqisti shuhada'a lillahi walau ala anfusikum aw al-walidayni wal-aqrabin. In yakun ghaniyan aw faqeeran fallahu awla bihima, fala tattabi'u al-hawa an ta'adilu wa in talu aw tu'ridu fa inna allaha kana bima ta'amaluna khabira. So this is the first ayah in Surah An-Nisa, verse 135. The second verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah is the eighth verse, the ayah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuh ladheena amanu, kunu qawwameena billahi shuhada'a bilqist. Kunu qawwameena lillahi shuhada'a bilqist. Wala yajrimannakum shana'anu qawmin ala alla ta'adilu. I'adilu huwa akrabu littaqwa. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ The beauty of these ayat, if I were to dive into it, it will amaze you how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the alim and khabir, understands the human psychology. He is the creator after all. The first ayat, set of ayat that I recited from Surah An-Nisa, deal with the issue of biases when it comes to yourself, your family, your parents. It's biases based on love. Biases that are based on love. Things that you love, people that you love, and that is going to cause you not to do justice. The second group the second set of ayat in Surah Al-Ma'idah talk about biases for things you hate. Things you love and things you hate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us against that. Don't do injustice because you hate someone. My brothers and sisters, <clears throat> In the first set of ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Kunu qawwamina bil qist, shuhada alillah. That you must stand firm for justice as witnesses for Allah. Qawwamina. And if you delve into the concept of this word, especially from an Arabic language, qawwamina, qa'im, somebody who's standing. But when you say qawwamin, that's really indicating that you are doing this over oh, and over and over. Students of Arabic language, if, you're, if you follow that, you can say, it's fa'aleen. Something that you are that going to do, because it's not going to be a matter of one day. You are going to have to engage in justice over and over and over. And you have to stand up for justice over and over and over. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these ayat, in the first set of ayat, sets one of the highest standards ever. And why do I say that? What is the ayah says? 
I don't think any book of justice or legal verdict anywhere would say that even if it goes against you, which means basically if I have to testify against me, what an amazing concept. What other culture, religion, system of life would say that? I mean, these are the people that are most beloved to you and it comes time that I have to testify against my dad? How would I do that as a son? Or if it's my relatives, could be my wife, it could be my family member, people I love. And it's a concept that, you know, we, it's very really difficult for us to understand. But when it comes to justice, when it comes to adl, as the previous speakers were talking about, placing everything in its right place. Now look at the ayat that, that come afterward. إِن يَكُنْ غَنِيًّا أَوْ فَقِيرًا فَاللَّهُ أَوْلَى بِهِمَا Regardless if this person is, if it's, he's a rich man, he's part of the elite, he's from a special part of society, or he could be a poor person. Now let me give you an example. Think about a scenario, it's someone that, who gives a lot of money to our masjid, or someone who has contributed to a campaign, and you're thinking, well, uh, you know, let's go easy on them. Even the hand of Fatima, remember that. The reason corruption, we were in the previous session talking about corruption. When you allow those type of things to continue, what happens? Corruption spreads and suffering happens. We talked about that. So brothers and sisters, regardless if this person has a special status in society, or maybe he's a faqir, he is a poor person. And you would say, well, maybe he had a really bad childhood. He had a difficult childhood. When it comes to justice, when it comes to applying the sharia, it has to be fair and square. So Allah is reminding you, فَاللَّهُ awla bihima." It is more important that you, your, your allegiance is with Allah and not with people with status. And Allah is warning you. Now, you have to understand something very fundamental. That laws are there to support justice. But laws are not equal to justice. And why do I say that? Think about a scenario. <clears throat> um, you know, the Prophet ﷺ one time, two men, two people came to him uh, in case of a dispute. Famous story, a lot of you probably know it. And one of them was very eloquent and was able to present his case in a very eloquent way and he was well spoken. And the other one couldn't. The Prophet ﷺ, because from a from a decision-making perspective, from a Sharia perspective, there are certain guidelines and rules and you have to obey, obey them. And you say, okay, based on the evidences, based on uh, your presentation of the case, you have the right for this thing. And the other, so one person wins and the other one loses. But what did the Prophet wasallam look at his wisdom and intelligence? He would warn these people, both of these people and say, listen, you can probably get away in this world knowing what is true, what is justice, because the person who's involved, they are the ones who really know who is the right and who is the wrong. But obviously, we can read the mind of someone, we cannot be in the heart of someone. So we have to base our decision based on circumstantial evidence, on witnesses, and so on and so forth. So he warned them, he said, you may be able to get away with justice here in this world. But if you are not focused on, you don't have taqwa of Allah. And that's why the ayat 
continuously remind people of taqwa, then remember that you will be eating a piece of the hellfire. This award that you would get as a result of that, it will be a piece of hellfire. And this is, there are so many other scenarios. Let's say in a Muslim society, for, for a few moments, take this example. The witnesses, there are four people needed as a witness for immorality. Right? Now imagine if four people decide from the community to go punish somebody and they go and present their cases, maybe that person would end up being punished. But was justice served? Was justice served? During the famine and the time of uh, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he suspended the punishment of stealing. Because I want to take you brothers and sisters to another concept. I want to kind of transition into the true concept of justice. As we were talking about putting everything in its place, which means if somebody is stealing, let's say we hear from time to time on on the news that in some African country a woman was punished because of prostitution. Now, if she was punished, but did anyone look into the issue of why she was com committing that, that act? Why she was involved in prostitution? Did anyone go look and see if she was really, if her children were starving from, 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 from food, shortage of food? What were her circumstances? What is happening behind the scenes? Justice is to ensure in a, in a formal system of justice is to ensure that people have the right. We don't talk about justice in Islam and a lot of time people get confused between the Sharia rules and penal code and justice. They are two different things. It is justice that every member of society will get and receive their due rights. It is justice that either the government or the authority would ensure that immorality is not happening in society. And back in the days, or at least the, the sources of immorality are shut down. Now, if you see that you catch somebody in an immoral situation, maybe a child or a boy or a girl, and you say, we have to apply justice to this, to this individual. But wait a second. Has society been able to shut down these avenues of immorality? Let's say there is a lot of drug trafficking happening everywhere. Well, why is drug trafficking happening in the first place? Are we able to shut down the reasons behind drug trafficking and immorality and all forms of corruption in society? And then if somebody continues to be the one who is bent on engaging in these false, in these bad things, in these immoral acts, yes, maybe at that point, we talk about punishing them. So brothers and sisters, in the few minutes I left here, I just want to uh, <clears throat> touch upon the last ayah. وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ أَنْصَدُّكُمْ عَنِ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ أَنْ تَعْدَدُوا Now, don't let the animosity of nations who stopped you from visiting the Masjid al-Haram, that you would transgress against them. Now this ayah and the context of this ayah, we don't have time to speak about that, but the point here is, as we are required to be just even against ourselves or in scenarios about people that we love, similarly, the animosity of a nation 
the animosity of people doing bad things to you. So when these Arabs would stop the believers from going to the Masjid al-Haram, when the time came in and they had the ability to punish them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them, don't do that. If they are going to the Masjid al-Haram, whatever form of ibadah or worship they are engaging in, since that form of ibadah and worship is part of a, a righteous concept, maybe they are not completely guided, but there is a righteous concept. Don't stop them from doing anything right. So, at the end of it, brothers and sisters, why do we engage in justice? Is it because the right thing to do? Is it feels good? Is it the favorite thing to talk about because everybody would appreciate that? No. No. We engage in establishing justice in society because Allah has ordered that. It could be the right thing to do. It could be the popular thing to do or the unpopular thing to do, regardless of that, what the, the societal, the environmental factors must not really conflict our thought process. We should be very clear. Qawwamina lillah. We are standing for justice over and over and over for Allah. We are seeking the reward from Allah. When we say, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا We are feeding you for the sake of Allah and we are not looking for anything from you. It is for Allah. That's if we are able to get our head around this concept of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever we do, because the reward, brothers and sisters, the reward that we are looking for is not in this world. If we get this, some reward in this world, that's great, alhamdulillah. But at the end of the day, the reward that you and I are seeking is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اِعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَى So at the end of it, I'll say this in my closing remarks. Justice is actually equal to taqwa. Justice is actually equal to taqwa. A person who is going to, when you are talking about justice, you're talking about adl. I am mindful of the rights of my spouse, of my wife. I can only do it if I have taqwa, if I fear Allah. I will complete my contracts. You know, when we, when we talk about uh, mu'amalat and ya ayyu ladheena amanu, awfu bil there's another ayah in Quran, all who you believe, fulfill your contracts. And that's where the concept of taqwa, and that's where the concept of agreements come in. Every sphere of life, when it comes to loyalty between a husband and wife, safeguarding the assets in your bank, social contracts, you know, the norms of society, the unspoken norms, uh, the agreement and the respect of life and property, all these are forms of justices which can only stem, which can only be developed, which can only be recognized if the person has the fear of Allah and is conscious of Allah, I'm going to be accountable. In fact, there were several conversations going on during this, uh, this convention because the theme, the over, overarching theme here, establish a just society. Because when you have a just society, everything, everything will be balanced. All corruption, all forms of corruption, small or large, will disappear. And this applies not just in mu'amalat or, or ibadat. It's every form, of, every form of activity that we are involved in. When you leave from here and you're walking back there, there's, there's some justice going on. There's some adl. You're, you are going to not cut off someone else who was trying to go in front of you. Maybe you'll just wait for them to you know, reach to the, to the end. If you're waiting for wudu, there is justice there. If you're purchasing something from the store, there is justice there. You brought something and you know it's two dollars and thirty-five cents, but you gave them two dollars only, or you really cut them short. 
every activity that you do, and we do, brothers and sisters, there's justice in it. So if we as a society can form those and adopt those norms, things will become, start becoming in that play, level playing field for everyone. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this a just society for ourselves and our children, our generations. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us prevail justice and call people of this land and help and show a model example by having justice in our own families, in our own communities, in our society at large. Zakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.